Women are more than just bodies. See more, be more. How many of you believe that you are more than a body to decorate the world? There are a million other messages in this world from profit-driven media, even well-meaning people, many, many people in this world that are begging you to believe that your impact and your strength as a woman comes from this and that's where it ends. And we're here to tell you that you are more than a body. This generation is unlike any other. You are exposed to millions and billions of images and messages of what it means to be a woman streaming through your phone on every screen you can imagine. We spend so much more time staring at screens than any generation in the past. And this sets up ideals, ideals of what it looks like in our heads to be a girl or a woman. Not even a perfect 10, but just what does it look like to be a girl or a woman? How do I qualify to be somebody who's healthy, lovable, successful, capable of anything? And those ideals look one specific way in all forms of media. They look like this. These women are usually tall, very thin, but with curves in all the right places. They have poreless faces, wrinkleless faces, They've got long flowing blonde hair and these women are usually always white. This is the standard in media. This is what we see again and again. That reduces women to parts of women and sells us this message again and again. What most people don't fully grasp is that Photoshop and altering images really does change our perception of what normal looks like, even if we're not fully conscious of it all the time, or even if we think we're fully conscious of it. It changes our perception of ourselves and of what girls and women should look like in real life. So I'm going to go through just a few examples. The first one is from social media. Ronda Rousey, um, most of us know who she is, she's a, a champion boxer. So she posted this photo on her Instagram and some of her fans got a little confused and started commenting and messaging her and saying, hey, I watched you on Jimmy Fallon and your arm didn't look exactly like that. In fact, I have an image of it that looks different. And Ronda Rousey later actually posted the real image um, and she didn't say why it had been altered or who did it, but her arm clearly looks a little bit different than it did in the original image. These things are happening constantly and we need to be aware of it even in social media, especially with celebrities and people that we are looking to for beauty ideals and body ideals and things like that. And somebody like Ronda Rousey, one of these incredible athletes who is unbelievably fit, she should not be feeling the need to slim her arm down to post it on Instagram, yet these are the ideals that we are taking into our lives all the time. When men are allowed to age, we see their lines and their pores and their wrinkles and stray hairs and gray hairs and everything else that human beings have as they live and as they age. But we don't get to see that for women. And we end up feeling subpar and abnormal in our own faces because we are consistently being exposed to images like this very fake cartoon one-dimensional image of Linda Evangelista. We must be aware of how unreal ideals are exerting pressure on all of us, whether we recognize it in the moment or not. We want to talk to you about how objectification really harms society in three pivotal ways. The first way is how objectification harms the minds and the psyches of boys and men as they grow up in the same world that girls and women are growing up in. This media begs boys and men to believe that the most important thing about a woman, the most important thing about a girl that you're seeking to have a relationship with or to value, to have in your life, to have in your photos on social media, is what she looks like above all else. This is so harmful to relationships in so many ways. Can you imagine how harmful it is for, girls and bo or for boys and men to grow up in a world that is constantly telling them, women are here to be looked at, women are here to be consumed, women are here to decorate the world first and foremost. This is dangerous. This leads to the most unhealthy relationships you can imagine. And this is what happens because of objectification. It happens on a spectrum. On one end, boys and men learn to catcall to kind of street harass, you know? They see somebody that they like and they say, oh dang, you know, and they yell out something. When was the last time you were catcalled and you thought, that is the nicest compliment, thank you so much. <laughs> you don't, you feel like yucky, like you feel like, no, this is disrespectful, this is not okay. And that's because catcalling for boys and men is something that they learn to do as a sign of power. 
as a sign of being able to exert force upon somebody else. It's not a compliment. They're generally not trying to be really kind to you and pay you a really sincere compliment, or they do it a different way. It also comes on the very other end of the spectrum. Objectification happens in terms of violence, rape, abuse. All of this happens when you objectify somebody, you dehumanize them. The first step to committing violence against somebody is to dehumanize them, to objectify them. And this happens across the board. Self-objectification happens in a world where we grow up being told and seeing that objectification is the norm, that our parts are the most important part about us, and that as we fix ourselves, then we can attain health and love and happiness and success. This internalizes and then we live it. And it looks like this. I'll give you an example. Let's say you are walking through the halls at school. And instead of thinking about that test you need to study for, or that you need to talk to your mom because you haven't really talked to her in a while, you've got this mental task list in your head. And this has to sound familiar to so many of you because it does to me every day. This task list says, oh, I should have washed my hair this morning. It's super greasy. I bet that person sitting behind me in class thinks I'm disgusting because of how greasy my hair is. And I got a zit. I'm sure people that are talking to me feel bad for me because of my zit. And they're not looking at me. They're thinking about my zit. Or I gained a little weight, got to keep everything hiked up just right, pulled down and covered because I am here to be looked at. To strengthen the impact of women, we have to embrace our pain and rise above it with resilience. In order to do that, Lindsay and I know through our research and through our personal experience that there are ways that we can counteract the sinking into shame that we so often do, the coping mechanisms we so often use to just cling to that comfort zone that is so uncomfortable. And we have categorized these into four sources of power. These sources of power are your key to resilience. You can start them now in your life. We promise you that, you will, that they will change you immediately. One thing we want to ask you to do that will really harness your mental might in an amazing way is to go on a media cleanse. That means we want you to stay away from all forms of media, especially social media, for at least three days. That means you need to delete the apps on your phone. I promise you, if it sounds hard to you, that means you are being called to do this, and it will change your life. When you stay away from media for a given amount of time, you get resensitized to messages that are meant to hurt you really quickly. When you come back to media, all of a sudden, everything you become a little bit more sensitive to and you realize why they're targeting you, what they're selling to you, why they are trying to make you feel like your body is the most important thing about you. And as you become resensitized to all of these messages, you take your power back, you unfollow, you hide, you unlike, you unsubscribe, you spend your money in better ways. We encourage you to turn to other girls and women. We want you to know that other girls and women are your greatest asset in this fight because we are not alone. We are all experiencing very similar things. And if the person you decide to turn to and open up to has not experienced the same pain and shame that you're going through, we guarantee that she knows someone who has. And when you open up to someone you trust, then you open up a way to find more help and more resources. We are set up in this world to believe that women are catty and jealous and gossipy and backbitey and we can't get along. You know, put some women in a room together and they won't like each other. But we know firsthand that is absolutely not true, that girls and women can be our best friends and our greatest assets through our entire lives. And so we ask you to lean on those other girls and women, be a shoulder to cry on, be a support and also receive support from those women that you trust. There is no finish line you have to cross before you deserve to feel good about yourself. No beauty finish line, no weight finish line, no love finish line before you deserve to feel good about yourself. You are worthy of love exactly as you are. As you turn outward instead of inward, you can change everything. This world needs what you can offer, not just a vision of you, but all of you. Like with everything in me, I know that these words are true for every single one of us, and it's hard to believe them sometimes, but we have to try. As we learn to see more in ourselves, as we learn to see more in the media and in the cultural ideals around us, and as we learn to see more in other people, especially in other women, we can see more than just bodies. That will give us this solid foundation to be more than just bodies. As we can focus on more, as we can see more in ourselves, we can be more by contributing more to the world, by not hiding, by not fixing, by being who we really are meant to be and serving in ways that this world needs women to serve. There are huge problems in this world. And without the help of women, these problems will never get solved. We will never see progress that this world needs. 
And as we learn to see more and be more, that is beauty redefined.